So welcome to today's session where I'm going to take you through some of the basics of getting started with the SAP Business One Integration Hub. So as you are probably aware, the SAP Business One Integration Hub is a new solution from SAP that is built on top of B1i Air for the SAP Business One Integration Framework. So the Business One Integration Framework's been around for many, many years. Um, and in order to utilize the Business One Integration Hub, you need to be utilizing the very latest version of the Business One Integration Framework, that's version two. So of course you'll need to be on SAP Business One version 9.3. And as I go through today's session, I'm gonna be using version 9.3 patch level 13, which is as of today, which is the 18th of April, that is the very latest uh, patch release of SAP Business One that's available. We're gonna be doing everything on HANA. And just to add a little bit of fun and flavor to this, I'm gonna be doing everything in a cloud environment. So some of the things I'm gonna show you uh, will be helpful to you if you are running the SAP Business One Cloud Control Center. But along the way, I'll point out some of the differences if you are looking at this video and thinking, well, I wanna do this on premise or on premises rather, because a premise is an idea. Um, so anyway, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off uh, and we'll take a fairly structured approach to this because I think you know, that's the best way that we approach this is in a couple of sections. And of course, with any good software implementation program or any good installation process, it always helps to have your preparation right. So let's start off by looking at that. So I've already told you we're gonna be using SAP Business One 9.3 patch level 13, and we're also gonna be doing this on the SAP Business One Cloud Control Center. So what you're gonna to need to do in the first instance is you're gonna to need to go and make sure that you get all of the Business One Integration Hub components. Now, not only we're gonna install the Business One Integration Hub, but we're also going to deploy one of the solutions, which is the SAP Business One Intercompany plugin for the uh, for the integration hub so neither of these components actually come shipped on the same iso that you would have downloaded when you uh, when you went and you installed sap business one in fact the only component that you get on that iso apart from of course the core business one is the business one integration framework and so we're going to go through the process of installing that but we'll do that from the standard iso to get the other components, though, you're gonna need to go to either the SAP Partner Edge website, or uh, if you don't have access to Partner Edge and you wanna get access to these components, well, you can also go and visit this website, which is the SAP Business One Integration Hub. So this is a new website that I've built uh, specifically focused on helping you work with the Integration Hub. You're gonna find on here, we have a number of forums where you can go and you can ask questions and you can share information with people. Um, blogs where we'll talk about different topics as it relates to integration and digital transformation, which of course begins with integration. Um, you'll also have access to a number of resources. So for example, this video, uh, you've probably, if you're not watching it on YouTube, there's a good chance you might've actually got it from this website. So this is where, you know, all of the videos and training materials that I'm putting together for you free of charge, you'll be able to get access to all of those. So we've got a range of those videos here already. These are the standard SAP Business One videos. But of course, then you've got all of uh, all of my videos, which will be on here as well. And again, of course, most important piece is the forum. So you'll see on any page, you can come in here, sign up, join the community forums and, uh, and really get active with the SAP Business One Integration Hub. But anyway, back to uh, the Partner Edge site. And we'll go in here and we'll choose SAP Business One. And so you'll find uh, all the information that you need um, as a partner will be on this page. And you'll see there is this page here when you come into the main Business One area and you've got integration products for SAP Business One. So that's really where you wanna dive off into. So you're gonna find a whole range of different things on this page in case you've never seen it before. Um, the information, uh, overview presentations and information about working with the integration framework. But of course, we've got our intercompany integration solution. That's what we're gonna be downloading here. And then of course, the components for the SAP Business One Integration Hub. 
all right, including um, some administrator guides, uh, videos walking you through some of these different steps. And by the way, that's the videos that we've got for you on the SAP Business One Integration Hub website. So of course, if you don't have access to the Partner Edge portal, then you've got access to that website. All right, so then there's also these other uh, SAP integrations, integration for the uh, Ariba network, SAP Cloud for customer and so on and so forth. So anyway, we're gonna start off and we're gonna go and grab our components for the intercompany integration. So one thing that you do wanna be aware of, um, there is a central blog here which explains what's happening with the intercompany integration solution. So this is put together by Peter Hartwich from the SAP um, Germany team. So good place to keep an eye on things um, as, as they relate to the intercompany integration solution. And of course, here on the integration hub, um, you will find that there is a link to the SAP help portal and a central blog for SAP's information about the Business One Integration Hub. But of course, we're here to supplement that information and maybe take it a little bit deeper than potentially what you're used to with what SAP will give you. All right, so anyway, a couple of other things. One of the big challenge with challenges with the integration piece uh, and I've talked about this in a couple of my blogs, is trying to make it simple and trying to get started quickly and easily. And intercompany is no different. So one of the things that you'll see here is you have all these localized demo databases on SAP HANA that have got the intercompany integration solution pre-installed. All right, so you know once you've configured the intercompany integration components, you can just take one of these demo databases for one of these different countries, of course, pick the one that's applicable to you, um, and you can uh, you can go ahead and you can start working with that. So I've already downloaded the Australia and New Zealand database, but these are very very easy to get to. Um, just one click, find the database. Now you'll see it's built on 9.3 patch level eight, so. We're gonna to need to upgrade that, but I'm not gonna take you through all of that. Um, the business one upgrades, not the most exciting thing to watch. So I've already done that, but you know, you can come here and you can download it and you'll see, it's basically downloading this zip file. We're not gonna sit here and wait for an hour for this to happen because I've already done it. Um, but uh, that is a, a HANA schema export. So you can just import it straight into HANA and away you go. All right, so I'm gonna hit cancel on that because as I said, already got all of that. So let's go back and then let's take a look at what you need for the um, integration uh, the integration hub. So now there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of. When you install B1IF and you go to install the intercompany solution and the integration hub, there are extra components that you need to download. Now that's a bit of a pain I know and I've spoken to the team at SAP and they've told me that they're going to actually rectify this so you don't have to go through this process of downloading the integration components and then downloading these extra pieces. But um, what you'll find here is that if you look at this SAP note, let's just drill down into it. And you'll see this actually talks about um, all the troubleshooting steps that you may need to go through uh, as you're deploying the solution. So hopefully uh, you'll find this relatively straightforward. Now, by the way, um, this is the new SAP Universal ID that you're seeing here. I've signed up for the SAP Universal ID. If you haven't done so, I would recommend you do that. Um, and you can go to universalid.sap.com. But this is a good solution from SAP now for managing all your sign-ins and usernames and passwords. So um, it basically keeps a record of all of the different credentials that you have, links them all back to an S number, and then allows you to choose which of those credentials you want to use when you sign in. So for now, I'm just going to use my standard uh, password, and oops, nearly put in the wrong one, because I've just changed this recently. Change your passwords every 90 days, always good security practice. So I'm gonna log in and you'll see with the universal ID, it actually allows me to pick which one of these different accounts that I wanna use. And I've got a number of different S numbers for different reasons, but this is the one I want. So I'll grab that and then that's gonna bring me in and sign me on to the page that I want, the SAP note. 
be a little bit like watching paint dry some of this stuff, unfortunately. But anyway, you'll see the most important information that you're gonna find here is relating to the intercompany patch levels. So intercompany and the integration hub has a different patch level to um, SAP Business One. All right, so we're gonna be using the very latest, which is patch level 37, which is supported on SAP Business One 9.3, patch level 12 and 13. All right, so if we go across here and we look at the associated note, which contains all the information that you need if you're gonna deploy this patch level, you'll see that this note will give us all the information about the patch installation. And it's asking, or it's pointing out to you that if you do wanna use the integration hub, um, then you need to follow this note, SAP note 2899325, to get a number of additional uh, files. So if we click on here, I know this is what I said, it's a little bit, uh, little bit of a, a drawn out process and you gotta know where to go to grab all these things. They're gonna put it all together. But here it is, we've gotta download these two files um, and then we have to bring them into the integration framework after we've installed it. So I've already downloaded those, um, but let's just do it again just for the sake of the exercise because they're very, very quick. So if you come down here, you'll see right down the bottom, we've got these attachments. So there's this attachment, which is only 124K, and then this attachment here, which is a little bit bigger, um, but again, they're both, uh, they're both not overwhelmingly large, so they don't take a long time to load. So again, you'll see this is a mandatory package to run the Integration Hub patch level 37 on Business One, patch level 12 and patch level 13, all right? So this is part of the reason why I like to do some of these videos because, you know, sometimes you can stumble around and you miss things. So hopefully this makes life easy for you. All right. So we've got all of our downloads for um, patching up the Business One integration framework. But now we need to go and get the uh, SAP Business One um, intercompany solution and the integration hub itself. So in order to get to that, we need to go back into our downloads area and sometimes using your back functions doesn't necessarily work that well. So a lot of the time I find it's just easier just to go back to um, Partner Edge and go back to your Business One main page and then dive across here onto the right hand side and go to your software downloads. Now remember, these are gonna be patches. So they're not, um, they're not in the installation area. So we need to go to support packages and patches. We come here into SAP Business One, SAP Business One products. And then we're going to be doing this on SAP Business One version for SAP HANA. And we're doing 9.3. So you need to make sure that you have all of the correct components loaded, that you've got your Business One 9.3 patch level and you've got that loaded up. Okay, so you'll grab that from here to load up patch level 13. But then what you need to do is if you come back here to your Business One updates, you'll see here you've got your B1 intercompany integration. All right, so we'll click on here. Here it is, B1 intercompany uh, a little bit of a typo there. Uh, but anyway, that's the way my Australian accent sounds anyway, into company. Um, integration 2.0. And then we come into here and we say our comprised software component versions. Don't worry about this other required components. There's nothing there that you need. Come in here, business one, intercompany integration. And then we want to add this component to our download basket. Or you can just simply click on here and it will allow you to download that file directly. Always a better idea to use the download basket if you can, because you'll see this is a 148 meg file. Some of the other files are really big, so the download manager allows you to um, you know, resume your downloads. Uh, you can set them all downloading and, and walk away and then come back and it manages it all for you. But this is gonna be fairly quick. So um, we'll have that, that intercompany 2.0 uh, available there. All right, so then if we come back, you'll see that we can also come here into SAP Business One um, integration, oh, updates rather. We come down here to the integration framework for SME 
and you'll find in here you have a number of other components as well. So again, you've got um, patches for the integration framework. We don't need this uh, at this point in time because we're already working with the very latest um, version of SAP Business One. So that's gonna have everything that we need. All right, so let's now that we've got all those components let's actually go ahead and we're going to install the business one integration framework all right so right now i am on my newly prepared windows server machine um, that is running on hyper v in our cloud data center and uh, this is the machine that i'm going to install the dedicated b1i components on so this is my um, ISO that I've already downloaded for 9.3 uh, patch level 13. I had to think for a second there. And you'll see we've got all of our different packages here um, available. Now, remember that the integration is not um, a 64-bit solution. It's actually 32-bit. Uh, so it has some 64-bit components, but you'll find it here in the packages area under B1 integration component. All right, so you need to come in here and you're going to need to go into the technology folder and then you're gonna to wanna to run setup. Now, very important point to note, make sure that you have already installed the Business One uh, DI API, the data interface API for your version of SAP Business One before you install the Business One integration components. So on this B1i machine, we're gonna need the DI API. And of course, you're also gonna need your HANA drivers. So you wanna make sure all of those different components are already loaded for you. Uh, well, well, you've gotta probably have be the person who's gonna to have to load all of those. So, but just make sure they're all loaded anyway. Um, and remember, you can always come in here and double check you simply, and I'm gonna do that because to be honest, I can't remember if I've actually done that. So I'm just gonna go into my control panel and go into my programs and features and make sure I've got everything installed. And as luck would have it, uh, I haven't done that yet. This is a brand new clean um, machine ready to basically go, uh, a, a, Windows, uh, a Windows server machine. So I'm gonna get those components installed and then I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back and you can see now that the control panel uh, looks uh, very different to what it did before. I've obviously gone ahead and I've deployed the 32-bit and the 64-bit DI API. I've also deployed our SLD agent, which is a component of the SAP Business One Cloud Control Center um, that allows this particular machine to communicate with the triple C. Um, and whilst I was at it, I've also deployed the HANA Studio onto this machine. Just in case I need to do anything with HANA, just makes things a little bit easier for me, okay? And so now I'm gonna go into my software repositories. Again, if you're working with SAP Business One in an on-premises environment, you won't have this. You'll probably have a slightly different structure with um, a central repository, but the concept is the same. Uh, I have all my SAP Business One installation folders here for every version that, uh, that we support in our cloud. I'm gonna to go to the very latest version, which is patch level 13, as we've said before. Come in here into the upgrade CD and it says 32-bit app, so we go here into our packages, into the B1 integration component, into technology, and we'll right click on the setup and tell it to run as administrator. It's not a bad habit to get into whenever you're running any of these setup applications, even though it's got like the little shield application indicating that it's gonna try and run as administrator, always right click and choose run as administrator just to be on the, the safe side. You know, the number of times I've bumped into products where uh, even though that value is set, if you don't run it as administrator, you run into problems further down the path. So it's just a good best practice to follow. So this is gonna go through uh, check that the system is actually ready for installation. So we'll let it do that. And then because it's running off a network, just takes a couple of extra seconds to access the files off the network. I'll tell it yes, that we're okay for that to run. Now you can, if you want to, you can you know always make sure that you put a copy of the installation files on the local machine. Personally, um, I don't do that. However, occasionally you'll bump into applications where 
if you're trying to install from a UNC path name, they just don't like it. So if you run into installation problems, that's one of the things that you can often check. And so you can now see that I've got the uh, SAP Business One integration installer. So I'll just say next. I will normally do a custom installation because then that gives me the ability to go and um, validate everything that's there. Again, specify your default installation location. And then this will be the password that is going to be uh, activated for your B1i admin. So I always like to change this. As a matter of fact, you have to change it. pop that in and then it's going to ask you which database do you want to use to persist all of your b1i settings so we're using hana it does default with the database server name to be the same name of the machine that you're installing on but that's not the case for us here so i'm installing on hana-sp13 in our cloud environment we have a separate hana server for every service pack um, obviously you have to do that um, and it will go ahead and validate your username and password and if you get it wrong you'll see you get this database connection failed and we're good to go so then uh, important point to note in your environment, if you're doing an on-premises install, obviously um, you select on-premises and you put in these values appropriately. Now, remember, this is the reason why I suggest to you, it's, it's a prerequisite that you install the DI API. So it automatically picks up your DI API path. And then you set a B1i username. Uh, remember, B1i is the user inside SAP Business One that is used to communicate with the Business One integration framework. Now, we're on demand, so I am going to go in here and put in the details of our cloud control center. And then it's gonna ask us for a domain user as well um, that we use. And this domain user uh, is what is um, set up against all the services that B1i use. And that's it. I'll then say next. Then we specify which of these components we want to install. So we definitely want to activate support for the Business One mobile solution. We have a lot of customers using that. We don't need the um, payroll support on this server. Um, I can, if I want to, is I can uh, activate support for the SAP customer checkout. So I'm gonna uh, activate that. And what this is automatically gonna do, it's now gonna create the necessary customer checkout database for me as well on that same server. And then, yeah, that's all good. So I'll say next. going to validate those settings and then we'll click the install button and away it goes all right so that process has now gone through and we simply say done so effectively the the b1i is now installed and so now if you open up your web browser and you go to https uh, localhost colon 8443 or in my case I just put the localhost IP address the loopback address you should get your SAP business one integration framework page so now of course the big challenge is that you've got all these issues with with um, with your certificates so now what we do is we have a wildcard certificate that we use for all of our domains so uh, I'm gonna run you through and show you exactly what we do to, to make sure that our certificates are working correctly. Now, the other thing that we also have, of course, is we have our triple C. Um, so if I go here to triple solutions.com.au. 
so this is our cloud control center um, website because we are integrating b1i with the triple c we have to make sure that we're using the same certificate for um, both of these sites okay so you'll see we've got a valid certificate here and our certificate is tied to star.smbsolutions.com.au. All right. So we need to make sure that we use exactly the same certificate for the um, Business One integration framework, particularly in a cloud environment. Otherwise, you run into all kinds of weird and wonderful problems. So um, I might do this as a separate session if uh, if people are interested, just provide me some feedback via the forums on SAP um, Business One Integration Hub.com. But with the uh, Business One Integration Framework, it's all built on Tomcat. So you'll find that there are a whole bunch of configuration files that you need to go and adapt um, with Tomcat and the certificates are kept in a key store file. So the good thing about this is once you've created, assuming that you've got multiple B1i servers, once you've created one key store file, you can then just go ahead and use that with all the others. And that's exactly what we do. So for example, if I now come in here into SAP and here's my SAP Business One integration folder. So this is now where everything is set up. Um, in the integration server uh, folder and here under Tomcat, when I go into web apps and I go into the B1 Accelerator, which is the main, um, if you like the main app of the Business One integration framework, you'll see there is actually a file here called .keystore. So we just take the existing dot key store from another one of our another one of our B1IF servers and just copy it into here. And that makes life really, really easy. Then there's a couple of other things that you need to do. All right. Um, you need to go in here into this accelerator.cfg file. You need to make some changes to that. And then you're also going to need to go back into um, the uh, the Tomcat configuration files and, and well you don't need to make these changes we make them because the default ports that that b1i run on are port 8080 or if you're using https um, on port 8443 now that's a pain as far as i'm concerned because if everybody is used to using you know um, https why would you want to put in a port number um, when you need to refer to it so we always change those ports um, to be port 80 and port 443. Um, so you need to go in and make those changes to that. So I'm going to show you how we do that right now. I'll show you how we can edit those configuration files. So let's go back into this again. We're in our uh, program files x86 SAP SAP Business One integration folder. We go into our integration server into Tomcat. Now let's do these files first. If you go into the CONF uh, folder, you'll see that there is an XML file here called server. So I'm just going to right click and we use Notepad++ to do all of our file editing because it makes life really easy. So what you want to do is you want to go through here until you find um, the lines where your connectors are defined. So right now we have a connector uh, for port 8080, which is our standard HTTP port. And then we have uh, our connector for port 443 or 8443, which is the, um, the HTTPS port. So all I do is I just simply come in here, change that, change that. So again, I'm just changing these to the standard port numbers. Same thing here with the connector port. Um, and the beauty of this, because we are using the same key store file which is already configured we don't have to worry about changing any of these passwords or which are encrypted in here obviously uh, we just need to change these um, change these ports and then save the file and restart the business one integration so i'll hit the save button this is why i like notepad plus plus if it's a file that requires administrator mode to change it it automatically detects that changes to administrator mode applies those changes for you uh, and then allows you to save the file. 
All right, so that's that first file is now changed. And then we come back here into our integration server, into Tomcat, Web Apps, and into the B1 Accelerator folder. And we come down here into accelerator.cfg. Again, we're gonna edit that with Notepad++. And we're just gonna come down here and we're going to find the, um, the value where you specify whether or not you want to allow um, the, the B1i to run um, on from or to be called from machines other than the local machine. All right, so you'll find there is a value here when you come in by default, it will be set to local only equals true. We go and change this to local only equals false. If you've done B1i before, you probably know this anyway, but if this is your first time, that's what you need to do um, is set that to local only equals false. So that is now done as well. So both of our files have now been changed. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and take a look at our services because we're gonna need to restart some services now because we've made those changes. So I'll just call up my services. This is usually the easiest way to do it is just to run services.msc. And then if we go down here in the list, we'll see that we have all of our B1i components and they've all got um, the, the username that I specified during our installation, uh, except for the integration service. So I'm gonna go and quickly change this one now and tell it to use the same service. Or use the same username to start the service, I should say. and then we'll say apply. And then of course it's telling us that that's not gonna apply until we start and stop the service. So I'm gonna do that now. So I'll stop it. And then we'll start it again. So that will now show us that the B1i is now running on port 443. So instead of putting port 8443 here, I can now just go and tell it just to use HTTPS and not specify a port number. You can see my history is automatically picking that up. I don't want it to do that. So now when I run it, it comes in. Now I've still got the not secure error message. That's because I haven't copied across my key store file. So I'm just gonna go and do that now. And so now I've, um, I've copied across my existing key store file. I always rename the existing key store just in case something goes wrong, you can immediately um, come back to that. We'll go back here into our integration service and we'll stop it. And then we'll start it. I'm a stop start person rather than a clicking the restart because at least you can see if it takes a long time. You can see if it's taking a long time to shut down or is it taking a long time to restart. So now that's done. And I come back in here and I refresh. You're going to see that I'm still going to get an error message if I use um, this, this format for the, the, the server name. Okay, because this 127.0.0.1 does not match to the, um, to the domain name in our certificate. So if I go in here and I say, yes, continue. If I go and look at my certificate, you'll now see that it is using the right one. So if I simply come in here and I put in the correct name for this machine, which is in this particular case, I see for intercompany, Dash B1I. Dash one. And then dot SMB solutions.com.au. And hit enter. 
voila, we now have our SAP Business One integration framework up and running with no certificate errors, everything's nice and clean. So the next thing you need to do is you're going to need to go in and you're going to configure the integration framework because remember, we've now got uh, a number of files that we need to apply to your Business One uh, integration framework, all right? So in our particular instance, what we're gonna do, first thing we need to do is we need to configure the Business One integration framework to talk to the Cloud Control Center. So I'll go in here, B1I admin, again using our password that we set up, remember, during the installation. So now I'm not gonna go through every intimate detail of the Business One integration framework here because there's a lot to learn with it. Um, I'm just gonna basically show you what we need to, to get started and to get the, uh, integration, um, the integration hub up and running and loaded. But you, know, you have the cockpit where uh, all of the components of the integration framework are stalled uh, or installed. Um, and then all of your company databases will appear here under the SLD. So for us right now, we won't see any because we have to go ahead and configure the system to talk to the cloud control center, link it to a service unit, and then it will pick up all the company names from that service unit. Uh, for you, you will have to go and configure the event sender. And the event sender will then um, link up your business one, if this is if you're on premises, it will then link up your business one integration framework to the companies uh, in your on-premises deployment. All right, but for us, we do it um, through here, through maintenance, because it is a B1 cloud environment. So I simply come in here. And then we tell the system we're gonna use HTTPS as our registration protocol. So this is going to register the um, B1IF into our cloud control center environment. So I'll give the server a name IC-B1I-1 and this will be our intercompany integration server and then this field will then be updated if I uh, am successful in registering the Cloud Control Center uh, we're registering this B1I instance into the Cloud Control Center. So I'm gonna hit save, save those parameters, and say okay. And then all things being equal now, I simply click register. It now triggers the registration. And this can sometimes be quite challenging getting just this part to work. If I now come in here into monitor, it'll pop up the screen and it will tell me Okay, what's happened? Has the, uh, has the synchronization worked correctly or has it failed? So this is where the fun begins, is if you start getting um, failure messages in here and you know, trying to figure out exactly what the problem is uh, can be somewhat of a challenge. So the thing you need to make sure of is that you have um, all of the the certificates in the certificate chain on both machines. So for us, our certificate comes from GoDaddy. There are three additional certificates that we have to have um, loaded up into our trusted root certificate authorities. So we copy those in and then it's a simple matter um, of restarting the integration server or the integration service. And then if I come in here and I say register, and we come in and say monitor. You'll now see we have successful registration, the um, connection to the B1 o, uh, SLD. In this case, it failed because actually I've just done it once before, so it was already registered, uh, but it'll say success, and then you'll see um, the synchronization starts working. And it's the synchronization which makes sure that whatever the SLDs are, that are in your associated SAP Business One service unit in the Cloud Control Center, that they appear in here. So if I come in here now and I go into our Cloud Control Center, I'll just quickly log in. So 
So you'll now see under our integration components, let's make that a little bit bigger, and there you go. There is our, um, our B1 integration server. All right, so it's now appearing in here. Now it's not currently allocated to a service unit, so it doesn't know which um, company databases it's going to be responsible for servicing. So we simply come up here into our service unit. Now I've set up a dedicated service unit in our environment um, specifically for this. So it's this one here, service unit F, which is running patch level 13. I come here to software components. I say register, I pick my integration component, and there it is, intercompany B1I-1, and I say register. That's now registered against this. And so every time I create a new tenant or a company uh, against this particular service unit, the B1I is automatically going to pick that up. All right, so if we go and have a look here right now, you'll see that I don't actually have any tenants. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take our SAP Business One intercompany demo database and I'm going to deploy it into our environment. All right. And then um, when we come back in here to the integration framework and we check our SLD, what we'll see is that that new company will appear here in the SLD list. Okay. So now I've brought that uh, demo database into my HANA system and you can see that the SLD has automatically picked up that that database is now available for us to use. So remember the next thing we had to do was we had to go through and we had to bring in a couple of additional packages into the uh, B1 integration framework. So we simply go here to maintenance. We come here into zip import. We choose our file and the first file we need to choose, let me just grab it from the location where I've put it. And you'll see I have this file here, changes underscore ICO underscore PL37 underscore hub. So I select that, I say open and then we simply say submit and okay and that's now done so the next thing we need to do is once again we go back to this file location And you'll see I have uh, this particular file, the B1IP file. So what we're gonna do is we are going to grab that file. We'll bring it across onto our C drive. I'll actually put it into the documents folder. and then we'll extract it here. So you, now you'll see that there are three files in here. So what we're gonna need to do is we need to go ahead and we need to stop the Business One integration service, first of all. Stop that. And then we need to dive in here into the location where those files, the originals of those files are. So it's under C, Program Files, SAP, SAP Business One Integration, navigate all the way down into our web apps, web inf, lib, and then you'll need to grab the 
copies of those files from here first, back them up. So we take our three files, our B1I accelerator, our B1I biz processor and the B1I P utilities. And we're gonna copy those. I'll pop them into my desktop, into a B1I backup files folder. I've done this before, so I'm just gonna replace those. Let's get rid of that file because we didn't actually need to back up that file. So there's our three files that we've backed up our copies of. And then we can now take the files that we've got here. Remember I've extracted these already. I'll copy those. I'll just navigate backwards into here and paste. And then we'll replace the files in the destination. So that's now done. Come back, restart the B1 integration service. And effectively, we have got everything basically ready for our B1 intercompany solution. So the next thing we need to do is to install the integration hub and the intercompany integration scenario. So you'll recall we also downloaded some other files from the Partner Edge portal. So let's just go back to where we've put those. And that was the B1 intercompany uh, patch 37 files, which I've uh, extracted and here they are. So first one we want is the intercompany solution scenario installer. So we'll go into here and then we'll right click and run the setup as an administrator. Now this process is fairly straightforward um, as long as you remember all of your credentials and you've gone through that entire process that we, uh, that we have already done and that's all been successful for you. So I'll just put in my username. Okay, so we're installing on HANA and our HANA server, obviously you put in your HANA server, but mine is HANA SP13. going to create a new database or a new schema called landscape put in our system username and password this is our b1i framework server remember I've changed my framework HTTP port uh, HTTP port rather to port 80 and we've got our B1I admin. And we're gonna install or up, update the integration hub, including uh, the intercompany on framework version two. So that's the option that we want. This is if you've already done intercompany on the framework version one, but this is a brand new install. So this is the one we wanna choose. And so it's accepted our credentials. So we'll say install. All the additional templates are being installed for us. Okay, so that can take quite a while. Um, in this case, it actually took 10 minutes. So don't worry if it, uh, if it does look like it's taking a long time, that is to be expected. So now we'll say finish. And so now um, it's quite a long URL that you can see up the top here. Um, if you put that URL into your web browser, uh, it will prompt you for your B1i admin username and password. We pop that in and we choose log on. And you'll now see that the Business One integration hub components are all loaded. And all you have to do now is go and load the Business One 
uh, integration hub add-on with your SAP Business One clients. So effectively, all the server components are now taken care of. That's all done. That's the most complex part of the implementation or the installation rather, because there's a lot more to do when you're talking about implementation. But that certainly gets you going on the server side of the SAP Business One Integration Hub. So don't forget, if you've got questions, jump onto the forums on www.sapbusinessoneintegrationhub.com. Uh, hopefully you found this series of videos to be useful. A lot more to come, but uh, this gets you basically up and running with your basic installation of the SAP Business One Integration Hub. Thanks.